Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing like a chatty get ready with me talking about first trimester of pregnancy, what it's like to have high premises gravidarum, all while reviewing the amazing Natasha Denona new glam palette. Uh, I'm totally in love with this palette, um, spoiler alert. Um, but yes, I used it to create this look that I'm wearing now, but um, I actually haven't used it before um, apart from one shade, which was the crease shade when I was kind of like just testing it out real quick. Um, so this is kind of like a first impressions as well of the palette. So I really hope that you guys enjoy this video and if you do, please subscribe, comment, like, and let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to start by using the Precisely My Brow brow pencil from Benefit. I really like doing my brows first sometimes. Um, I feel like it just gets like, it kind of sketches the outline of your face. Is that a really weird thing to say? So I thought I would do this as a kind of like get ready with me video featuring the new glam palette by Natasha Denona. I absolutely love the look of this palette. So I've used just one shade in it so far, like in just like an everyday look, and I thought it was amazing. So this is gonna be a much more glam look today. Um, but just so you guys know, I haven't actually used any of the other shades in the palette, so I'm very, very excited. So I thought at the same time that I'm doing my makeup, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about my experience of the first trimester of pregnancy. Now, I don't wanna scare anyone and like everybody's experience of pregnancy is different. And I would say that's why I had literally like no warning and no idea that pregnancy could be this difficult especially like in the first trimester and like I don't want to sugarcoat anything like um, I want this to be like a very very honest um, video so I found out that I was pregnant when I was around five and a half weeks um, and I felt kind of normal so I have a couple of chronic illnesses anyway that were causing nausea on and off for like around a year. So I was getting this like nausea like constantly, but I kind of put it down to like the medications that I was on for different, um, different illnesses that I already have. And so it never occurred to me that I was pregnant. I literally don't know why it didn't. Um, so I was just kind of like going along thinking, oh yeah, it's the usual like nausea. Um, that I would normally get. So for foundation, I'm not really actually going to be using foundation, I'm just going to be using the Brightening CC Serum, the Apricot one from by Terry, um, and then I'm just going to be using a concealer. I'm so sorry that the reflection of the ring light keeps kind of popping in like a halo behind me, but um, there's nothing I check and do a bed dead, sorry. Um, so yeah, so as I was saying, so with the nausea, um, it just started getting like worse and worse and worse um and i like i i kept being told like nausea is really common like in pregnancy like it's morning sickness but there was nothing morning sicknessy like about this this was 24 7 every second of the day like insanity and as this started getting like worse and worse and worse um, I got to the point where I was being sick like 25 to 30 times a day. I couldn't keep anything down. Like, and when I say anything, like I mean anything. And then it started getting really serious when I couldn't keep water down. So like the smell of water, I know this sounds like so mad, but it was like the smell of water was making me be sick every time I was so thirsty though, like it's the, like it's the craziest thing. I was so thirsty, I wanted to drink so badly and every time I would force this water down, it was just coming right back up again. Um, and I was being sick all through the night, I was hardly getting any sleep because I was just up and down, up and down, like just being sick, being sick. Um, and then it got to the point where I thought, okay, this is not normal um, and I went to see my GP. Now mind you, this was like during like Corona time so it wasn't really was not like the easiest to get an appointment um, and 
like I said initially like the first GP I spoke to on the phone was just telling me like yes this is like normal for pregnancy um like it will pass so I was like cool um but then I finally got an appointment with a GP by this point I was like I'm trying to think where was I so by this point it would have been maybe week eight so um I'd had like about mm, four four weeks actually so maybe it was a bit later than that so I'd had about four weeks of just throwing up constantly couldn't keep anything down and then he actually diagnosed me with something called a hyperemesis gravidarum um I had never heard of it before so you probably maybe haven't either I'm just gonna go in with the NARS concealer creamy concealer um just switch my soft box on because I felt like you couldn't really see this side of my face but you're gonna have to put up with seeing it in the reflection there so sorry guys so yeah I'm going in with uh, the NARS creamy concealer so anyway so then my um my GP diagnosed me with high premises gravidarum I had never heard of it before um, but then um, my mom actually had and she said that um, it was something that um, Duchess Catherine um, but the princess Will's wife um, she had it and that she had had it in I think two of her pregnancies um, and so then I started like researching into it a little bit more finding out like what exactly like it is now the thing that irks me more than anything is when people don't understand that high premises gravidarum is not morning sickness like it's really insulting like when people think it's the same thing to be honest because um they are two completely different beasts like morning sickness is maybe being sick a couple of times a day feeling okay the rest of the time, being able to drink water um, and not ending up in hospital. So anyway, so then um, we, I was put on like a bunch of medications which, which like did massively, massively help I have to say. Um, but in those beginning stages it just felt like nothing, I mean nothing was like curing me. Um, so I was still, I was just could not stop being sick. Um, like my poor boyfriend could not make any hot food like in the house. Like the smell of any food like being cooked, even the smell of like food being cooked downstairs and like another flat was like coming upstairs and it was just making me feel like so horrendous that um, he just had to eat out of the house literally anything he did eat I could smell on him so it was like if he ate anything with like garlic in um, like it was just in his pores it was um, it was just horrifying and normally like you know how they say you're attracted to like your partner's like skin smell like pheromones and stuff and like honestly like I love his smell <laughs> I know that sounds so funny, but like most of the time, honestly, like I love his smell. I think it's one of those things that chemically we're attracted to in each other. But I could not stand like the smell of his skin and the smell of my own skin, like literally just out of the shower, smelling of like nice bubble baths. No, like I could smell this, like it smelled like rotting pork and eggs is what my own skin smelled like, it's what his skin smelled like to me, and it would make me be sick. It was just like a terrifying time, um, and like, it was, I remember crying, like, because, <laughs> sounds so sad, but like, he, he was gulping down like a bottle of water, and I was so jealous because I wanted water so badly and I was so thirsty but I just couldn't like it was just every time I would drink some it would just come back up again um, and at the same time I was getting these really horrendous like um, cramping contractions um, like TMI but you know this is like a no TMI zone I'm afraid um, I was getting like bowel cramps that were also like cramping my uterus um, and they were so unbelievably painful like I had suspected endometriosis um, like about 10 years ago but they never actually got around to doing the actual laparoscopy 
I think that's what it's called, to find out um, because I was put on certain medications that made it temporarily better and kind of just forgot about it for a while. Um, so I don't know if it was that or if it was connected to this hyperemesis stuff. Um, by the way, I'm going in with the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush bronzer. Um, and I'm also going to be using their little brush. I love this, love this, love this product. Um, so, so because of these contractions as well, like I ended up going to the hospital. Um, and I know this looks like really crazy at the moment, but I will blend out. Um, yeah, I ended up going to the hospital um, where they did like an early scan. I think I was... I think this is when I was eight weeks. Yeah, sorry. So all of that was happening pre eight weeks. Um, and it was just really scary. Like it was a really scary time. Um, and this just went on this terrible, terrible sickness. Um, I've never felt so horrendous in my life. And like, when I say that, like I have um, a chronic UTI condition that I've spoken about before here on my channel um, and I have ME and Lyme disease um, and like although those things are really really difficult to like live with, this on top of that, like having that and then this issue, like it just, I just didn't know what to do with myself and it just felt never ending. Um, I did end up in the hospital a few times, like I was rehydrated, I was thankfully like never actually kept overnight, um, but I had like fluids put into me because um, when they test your urine, um, I'd gone into ketosis, um, like I had like raised liver enzymes or something like, I don't know, I was basically, my body had gone into starvation mode. Um, and I was like extremely, extremely dehydrated. And I think like when this happens over a prolonged period of time, like it's like you've got all that going on, but then it's it's also just like dealing with, like just imagine feeling sick, like every second of your life for weeks on end and no one can tell you when it's gonna end. That's the thing as well. You're like, so am I gonna be like this for like a whole nine months or like, because hyperemesis doesn't necessarily um, go after the first trimester, which I'm learning now. So I just wanted to like start with that as like one of the main horrendous things I had like in the first trimester. And then I was, I'm so, so lucky that it went away for me um, around week 16. So I had 16 weeks of it, but um, I lost like 10 kilos like within that time because I just couldn't eat anything. Um, and around 16 weeks, I started to get a little bit better. I still couldn't come off like any of the medications because like every time I tried, it would come back again like with a bang but I was so lucky that as I got into the second trimester um, I had like I would say I had a good a good eight weeks without it which is a win you know just having a little sip of decaf coffee in my boyfriend's pine glass because you know why not okay so before I carry on with my um pregnancy first trimester high premises story. I'm now going to start using the Natasha Denona Glam Palette. This is just so beautiful. Um, I'm just so excited. I'm so excited to try. So I thought I would insert an up close clip of the Natasha Denona Glam Palette so you can see it in all its glory. Uh, and also I wanted to show you some swatches of every single shade. As you can see they're so buttery and they're so pigmented but they're not foiled or glittery which is what I really really love about them and the cool tone shades in this palette are literally my absolute favourites. Um, I think I'm gonna go for a cool tone look because I never do cool tone looks. Um, I think I just always think that the warmer ones suit me. But having said that, I think I could be wrong. So I think I'm gonna have a little play with, I think I'm gonna sort of be going in with like this sort of like a sort of crease color, this on the outer corner. And I think I'm gonna go for this one 
um, as like the lid colour. Um, we're gonna see, I'll let you guys know like as I go along what I'm doing. So yeah, so for me a high premises Gravidarum like really overtook my first trimester experience of experiencing pregnancy and I remember at the time just thinking like if I get through this like I can never ever ever do this again um, and that was actually like a really sad thought because I always like one of my like big dreams and like goals in life was to have kids and you know um, actually if you've seen my previous video again um, this is many years ago actually um, I probably should do an update video on it but it was about my health stuff when I really thought I would never be able to have children um, and so this should have been like the most amazing surprise and like happy time for me um, it was also made really difficult by like not having family around because um, of COVID like not being able to see friends, not being able to see family because I found out I was pregnant in April, um, at the end of April. So it was kind of pretty much like in the height of lockdown here in the UK. Um, so anyway, so more on high premises. So it's, I basically had eight free weeks of it and then I'm now 27 weeks pregnant. So I'm now, I believe 27 weeks, is that the first week of the third trimester? I'm not sure, I think so, either 27 or 28. Um, but it started coming back and it kind of ruined our little trip away um, this weekend. But um, as, I mean, as long as I take the medication, like at the right doses and stuff, um, it, it doesn't get to the point where I'm being sick 30 times a day again, but it's still like pretty awful, like dealing with the nausea. Anyway, I just wanted to say like, so for those of you who um, don't have high premises but still have had like a bad um, first trimester experience I just want you to know that like you're really not alone my camera keeps cutting out because it overheats it's so so frustrating so um, I'm now going in with I forgot to say the uh, color smoke from the palette so I'm just gonna like smoke out this edge like a little bit um, so as I was saying, like um, even if you have like nothing to do with high premises um, in your um, in your first trimester, but you're just dealing with other things, like I, I just want you to know that like you are not alone. Um, I think when people have never experienced pregnancy, or they've um, been lucky enough to experience like a really like good pregnancy, it's really difficult for them to relate to what it can be like to literally have something completely take over your entire being and when you're feeling so ill 24-7 um, you just can't be yourself so I just felt like I was so sick that all I could do was I was I was just com I was completely bed bound and I'm used to that happening um, with my ME with my bladder condition it's not like I'm a stranger to it but this was just different this was like it was just so isolating and horrible um and like I have to say like my boyfriend was absolutely amazing like through this whole experience like he uh, I think if it wasn't for him like being there for me like I, I don't know what I would have done so next I'm gonna go in with gonna go in with this shade here so this is the outer lid. I kind of like how she's labelled them. It's kind of, yeah, I like that. So I'm really curious as to how this colour is going to look. It looks so beautiful in the pan. Ooh. I hope you guys can actually see this. This is a very, very pigmented, luxurious, like, kind of buttery actually like for a shimmery shade yeah I would say that it is actually quite buttery I really like this I think my advice is if you're struggling with hyperemesis in your first trimester or anything that's like really bringing you down and like really overwhelming I think block out all the negative 
people, um, things online. Like, I don't know why, like, I feel like people have a tendency to tell pregnant people how they should feel. Um, and there's this thing about how, like, oh, you should be so thankful. And it's not that you're not, it's not that you're not thankful that you're pregnant. But I think that you, that's, it's like saying, poverty going on in like the rest of the world means you should never ever have any emotions of your own and it's like of course like it's a horrific thing and you want to do as much as you can like to do your bit um to make that not the case but it it doesn't mean that you can now like never have like a bad day or have like bad emotions of your own it's the same like with pregnancy like i feel like you can be really grateful to be pregnant and really happy for that but then at the same time you can't ignore the fact that like your organs are shutting down and like you're so ill and you can't even drink water you know and that you have to keep being hospitalized um and have fluids like pumped into you and whatnot so i think my advice is massively like just don't let people tell you how to feel and let yourself feel how you you know how you need to so i'm just deepening that a little bit more Um, in terms of things that helped, so this goes for anyone who has like nausea and sickness um, in pregnancy. So one of the very, very few things that I could keep down, at least for like a little while, was watermelon, like really cold um, watermelon and cantaloupe melon was something that I could actually eat. Um, and frozen grapes, oh my god, like that was amazing. So I think I was actually getting some water content from those things. And then like as I started to feel like a little bit better, um, I uh, found that like making like berry smoothies, so my boyfriend was making me things like, um, so we, we'd use frozen blueberries, raspberries, um, some like oat milk, um, and what else did we put in there? Just just like a bunch of berries, really. Um, and then like when I could stomach it, some like frozen spinach as well. And I honestly think that those like nutrients are what like kept me going. So I would have stuff like that. And then, so as I was gradually coming towards those 16 weeks where I was feeling like a lot, a lot better, um, I could then start start thinking about eating actual food again. So I still can eat meals, like the smell of like meats and um, any like cooked meal was like a massive, massive no-no. Um, but um, I, <laughs> weirdly, all I wanted to eat was tuna fish and sweet corn sandwiches um, or like salmon and cucumber sandwiches. And I know like you have to be careful of like the mercury that like, content and stuff like when you're pregnant But honestly like my advice is that and I mean like don't drink alcohol and stuff But like when you have high premises like whatever you can actually stomach um, And I'm not I wasn't having this like every day like I was having it maybe three times a week Just eat what you can So now I'm gonna go in with the center eyelid color which is this one here Oh, that looks so beautiful. So I'm actually gonna um, take that on my finger and just place it down. That actually blends so beautifully with um, the other colors on the lid. Like it looks really, really nice with the outer corner one. I'm really impressed with this palette, so um, yeah, like I, I actually love this palette. I think this is going to become my favourite like winter palette. Um, and guys, these cool tones are just so beautiful. Like I am actually living for them. Um, and all I can say is just like hold in there. I also found like um, apps like the Baby Center app um, and the Pregnancy Plus one were like my best friends because they really kept me going like just seeing how baby was growing and like what they were doing this week and what they looked like was kind of like especially in those beginning stages where I felt so awful um, really really helped me to like kind of realize that um, this was happening for a reason um, and that like you know my my beautiful baby was growing inside um, and it was a huge worry with like high premises when you're not getting any nutrition 
and you're struggling like to keep hydrated like I was so scared of like losing the baby as well and we had like some a few like scares with that as well so yeah I just want to say like to everyone who is in their first trimester and really struggling um like hang in there honestly like it is gonna get better and even if it doesn't like I know that hyperemesis can um carry on like throughout an entire pregnancy um so I know it's probably gonna be the hardest thing you've like ever done but um it's gonna be worth it like in the end oh it's getting really hot in here like you know you know what they should invent is like a fan like a desk fan that makes no noise oh my god that'd be amazing it could blow my hair like all cool and shit okay so uh i've actually my camera like decided to switch off it overheats um and so all i did while off camera was i used this shade here the blend one um just underneath like a little bit but i'm gonna still apply a little bit more i'm um, just on the lower lashes so um yeah so in terms of things as well that helped me during the first trimester i would say um to also um again if you're suffering i'm sorry this is all like nausea related but it's the thing that i know like the most about because it's what i went through the most um things like um seasickness bands didn't really do it for me like at all like at all at all so i would say like <laughs> probably don't waste your money and stuff like that um and instead just get yourself to your doctor um because i found that the prescription medications are honestly what made the most massive difference like i know this sounds dramatic but i don't know where i would be like if i had not taken those two um specific um medications that i was i was given because i was dropping weight dropping weight like i said i lost 10 kilos like in four weeks um and i was then able to at least keep some water down and like eat some fruit and stuff um another thing that actually really helped was eating things that soak up the acid so um as much as like it has like zero nutritional value really i mean it helps because it's a fiber but um like wholemeal bread i found was actually really helpful at soaking up the acid um when i could actually keep it down that is um and actually like i feel it's so bizarre like how the human body works i think because i was starved for like so long that when I did start eating, it was like my body just piled on the weight because it's kind of like, you know, if you go on like an extreme diet and then you start eating normal again, and it's like your body's just like store, store, store. Yeah, that's literally exactly what happened to me. So I put those 10 kilos back on and now that I'm entering the third trimester, um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely way past that, <laughs> that 10 kilo mark. So yeah, I also, I wouldn't worry so much in your first trimester about like um, eating things that are only like really nutritious and, nutritious and stuff. Like you can concentrate on that in your second trimester if you're really, really struggling with like all the nausea stuff. So I would just eat what you fancy, like what helps the acid, what helps the nausea, what helps you to feel good. Because at the end of the day, like just eating something and keeping it down, um, you know, that's that's what's going to be the most important. So, and even now, like I find, like, because I'm still very, like, acidy still, um, I still have to make sure that I eat enough, um, like, stodgy carbs, like um, white potatoes or, or um, like, brown rice, and especially brown bread. Like, it just really does help to soak up that acid. So, you kind of have to forget everything you've been taught about nutrition and just go with like what is gonna um stop you from being sick because that's more important um than anything is that you actually have some food in your stomach um rather than it all coming back up so i forgot to say that this is the maybelline colossal volume express it's actually one of my favorite mascaras ever um, I think it's amazing. I feel like it doesn't clump the lashes and it really like if you blink into it, it Really like do you see that difference already is pretty cool, huh? So 
so I think there's not really much else I can say about the first trimester um, other than like from an emotional like perspective um, let yourself have days where you cry like I was saying let yourself have days even if those days are every day where you just feel like awful um, if you can like leave all cleaning food whatever responsibilities to um, whoever it is that you're living with like I hope to God that they understand what you're going through and that you physically cannot do those things like I really struggle to like empty the dishwasher like just I couldn't clean anything like the smell of of even cleaning products like it was just all so bad so and I'm so lucky that I had a boyfriend who um, really like understood all that and stepped up and he was just absolutely amazing he was like working all day coming home like feeding me feeding himself like he's always been amazing at that anyway and I think he's been um, used to with my like chronic conditions me having flare-ups but I mean this was like another level part of me feels like I want to leave this look without lashes what do you guys think do I stick lashes on? I wish you could reply. Fine, I think I am gonna put lashes on because it's such a beautifully glamorous eye look. I just can't help myself. So for lashes, I'm using the Eye Candy lashes. I've used these once before um, in 014. So they're kind of already pre-cut to like my eye shape. But um, I really like these ones because they've got like this fluffy, kind of vibe to them. So I'm just applying um, some glue to these lashes um, and then letting them kind of um, get tacky. Um, so another thing I would say about the first trimester is um, don't put too much pressure on yourself to learn everything about that you know you possibly think you'll need to know in that first trimester especially when you're really not feeling good because um you've got plenty of time to do all that so i had kind of freaked out and was like oh my god i know nothing and i mean like nothing about babies i know nothing about babies well i did then i know a lot more now and so i was kind of in panic mode i mean if it makes you happy and it's something that is enjoyable for you then by all means um I found some of it like really fun and like I was just like down the rabbit hole of um, YouTube but sometimes it did feel like kind of overwhelming that I was like oh my god like I don't know any of this stuff and I wasn't really retaining the information because I was like in panic mode so I was like oh my god I need to know about breastfeeding and I need to know exactly what happens if they get colic and then I need to know all these options for if they have colic and then oh my god like and then it was just so many like different things that I had like was kind of panicking that I didn't know anything about anything um, and you really do have lots of time when you're feeling a little bit better to um, actually investigate those things um, something that I did find like helpful though that did take my mind off it was watching um, other people's like day in the life of like vlogs like with babies and stuff um, or you know like our first week together and another piece of advice like I would give you is I know it's kind of traditional like not to um, tell anyone that you're pregnant until you get to 12 weeks um, because of all the things that can like possibly like go wrong which I totally understand and I totally understand if you actually don't want to um, but on the other hand if you're feeling so alone especially if you're going through something like high premises like i massively recommend telling like somebody obviously other than your partner um i've learned actually telling somebody who has either been through high premises themselves will be like a massive help to you um or like friends who have been pregnant before um, because they can offer advice that like no one else can and they won't keep telling you that thing of when you're like oh my god I'm so ill and I'm in hospital and whatever they won't keep being like oh but you know you're so lucky congratulations which is great but it's you need a very different like kind of support when you're going through all that so so yeah I definitely recommend telling somebody 
who has either been through it or who has had kids um, and you know maybe didn't have the most perfect pregnancy okay so lashes are on definitely has brought the look up a little notch or two I feel um, glamorous wise so now I'm actually gonna go in with an inner corner color mmm I could use the one that's called in a corner but I'm not sure is that the right oh it is the right shade I want Natasha Denona you obviously know what you're doing so I'm now gonna go in with this in a corner um, color right here so another thing that I would really recommend um, if you do have high premises gravidarum um, is um, joining the Facebook group. So I'm in the UK one because I'm based in the UK, um, uh, but they have them like all, all over the place for different countries and um, also the pregnancy sickness support group was really, really helpful. Um, also, you can email them, which I did um, when... I was having problems with that first GP, like not understanding what was going on. Um, and they are absolutely amazing at giving you support and advice. Also, I, I really do think that these um, Facebook support groups are like amazing. And um, especially when you might be feeling a bit um, alone like going through these things. Um, and then especially like in lockdown with like coronavirus when you can't really be seeing your friends and stuff like I found that things like that were really really helpful and so basically I feel like to wrap up um I just think don't put pressure on yourself to be this super duper person um and carry on like in life when you're feeling that ill um and also like direct people to the pregnancy sickness support um website if you're finding that the people around you just aren't understanding and aren't giving you like that support you need just want you to know like i'm here for you as well if you want to reach out to me um you can find me on instagram is the best place to contact me it's the christina maria um and i am definitely there to offer and also guys like um the first trimester is hopefully gonna be like the worst one for you i don't know because having said that i'm at the beginning of the third trimester and i can feel a lot of things happening that i do not like um and uh i can feel the high premises coming back um and so i don't know maybe the first trimester isn't the worst so next I'm going to be um, adding a bit of blusher and highlight and I'm going to be using the amazing NARS new um, Orgasm, it's called Orgasm X, yes, Orgasm X palette. Um, this is so stunning. It's got the original Orgasm in there, um, but it's this one. Oh my god, like I love this shade. It's like um, the original Orgasm, but as you can see, like slightly deeper tone, and it's also got like um, a bit of like sort of highlight in there. This highlighter is actually really nice too, um, but I'm going to be using that blush, and um, yeah, I'm just I just sort of I like to tap it in um, with this one rather than swipe it anywhere because I feel like it um, it just I don't know it applies more nicely, um, and I like kind of taking my blush like quite high up here and just sort of all around this area so that it kind of marries in with the bronzer. Again, I'm hoping that in this lighting you can actually see that. I hope you can see it. So it kind of gives you like a really beautiful flush of colour. So yeah, for me, the second trimester, which I'll do a separate video on, now that I have completed the second trimester, feels like a video game. So I felt that the second trimester really was the absolute best. Everyone says that. I feel like that was when the hypermesis calmed down for me and I actually got to suddenly think like, oh my God, I'm pregnant. Like, oh my God, like I can actually feel some happiness um, about this now because I was just, it was almost like overnight. I just felt like myself again um, and 
like I felt that was when we found out the sex of our baby um, which by the way you can find out again if you go to my Instagram the Christina Maria um, and it was where I felt like I started to actually get excited and started doing all the like fun stuff that you get to do um, and I'm so thankful for my second trimester also within COVID times there's still like so many restrictions but um, at least like we had like a sort of interesting summer where um, we could do like a little bit more. So for the lips I'm going to be using an NYX pencil, this is a really nice one. This is the Nude, um, it's also waterproof um, but I really like the colour. I like applying lip liner kind of all over the lip so that um, when your lipstick starts coming off you're not just left with this like weird outline <laughs> on the rest of your lips. Um, and then I'm going to be using the lipstick by MAC uh, called Love You Back. This is a really gorgeous nudie colour. wanted to keep the lips kind of nude so that it would make the eye look like really stand out um, and so that it could take centre stage. So that is the finished look with the Natasha Denona Glam palette. So um, just a few words on it as, as this is the first like full glam look that I have created with it. So I would like to say I love this palette. This is going to be my winter staple palette I think. So I know that a lot of people have compared this to the Anastasia Sultry palette which is also one of my favourite palettes which I have right here to show you for comparison. Um, so I know a lot of people have said that the colours are very very similar and I do agree that they are actually very similar so if you do have this palette maybe you don't need this one but it depends I feel what you're looking for because I would say that this, although there are some cool shades in there, I don't know, like this one feels very random like to me, but um, this is one of my favourite Anastasia like palettes. I love that there's a black in this one and there actually isn't in the Natasha Denona one, but these, I don't know, like I feel like the texture of the, they're a bit more glittery like in texture, like the shades, um, uh, whereas I find the Natasha Denona one is a much more smooth textured um, and even like the glittery they're, they're not glittery they're more shimmery does that make sense um, and slightly more like buttery like formula um, that kind of blends a little bit easier but having said that this this is one of my favorite Anastasia palettes and I would say like shades like Cyborg and Ember Rose Quartz um, Steampunk as well, I would say, is, yeah, they all like can be found in the Natasha palettes. But to wrap up, I would say I absolutely think that this palette is worth the money. Um, I adore it and I'm going to be using it um, a lot. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this like chatty um, review of the Natasha Denona Glam palette. Um, and also with my kind of um, little get ready with me conversation about first trimester of pregnancy. Um, if you enjoyed it, please do thumbs up this video, subscribe to my channel and please leave any comments down below of what you would like to see next. Um, what reviews would you like to see next? Do you like these kind of chatty reviews and get ready with me's? Or do you like me to focus more like on the makeup? Oh my God, pregnancy like acid reflux is a thing. So I will be doing um, more of these videos on the second trimester um, and then now as I'm entering my third um, I will probably towards the end of my pregnancy do a third trimester. So lovely spending time with you guys and I will see you in my next video.